QuickBooks Export Setup and Review. MaxTracks has a feature to export financial transactions generated within MaxTracks using an IIF, an Intuit Interchange file, which can be imported into a desktop version of QuickBooks Pro. This IIF file exports journal transactions generated by MaxTracks to the chart of accounts in QuickBooks Pro. Let's look at the IIF file that's generated in MaxTracks, how those transactions are imported into QuickBooks Pro, and then review the setup process that is needed to ensure the information is imported correctly into QuickBooks. From the menu bar, click on Accounting and select Export to QuickBooks. This is a filter to show transactions to be exported for a particular date range. You have an option to just export the cash drawer transactions or include the vendor invoices for your part purchases as well if you're tracking your part purchases in MaxTrax. Note credit memos from vendors are not included in the export. Credit memos need to be entered directly into QuickBooks. I could also select here to show previously exported items, but in most cases, we would not want to duplicate an already exported item unless there was a problem with the import in QuickBooks and you deleted the MaxTrax exported items file and now need to recreate that export file. Check this box if you want to export all these transactions listed below as a single journal entry to be posted in QuickBooks. Most shops don't actually select this option as they typically like the option of seeing the details of each repair order transaction for reference. And last, select if you want to use a two-digit year format or a four-digit year format to match your date format in QuickBooks. Click the Select All button and then the Export Selected Items button. Then all of these transactions are now bundled into one IIF file saved in the Scott Systems export folder. And notice those transactions are no longer on this list. Let's go take a look at that IIF file. It's saved under Scott Systems, the MaxTracks Pro folder, in this export folder. It has an export number, date, and time. I'll right-click on this file and open using Notepad. And look, here are all the transactions that will be imported into QuickBooks. Next step is to go into a desktop version of QuickBooks Pro and turn on the chart of accounts. This must be turned on in QuickBooks before your first import. From the menu bar, click Edit, select Preferences, and with the Accounting category on the left side selected, click the Company Preferences tab up here on the right. Then click the Use Account Numbers checkbox in the upper left. We have to use these account numbers for the import to work properly. And click OK. Now from the menu bar, click on File and select Utilities. Choose Import from the side list and select the IIF file. Then browse to the Scott Systems folder, select the MaxTrax Pro folder, and then the Export folder. This is the folder where the IIF files are stored after they are exported out of MaxTrax. Once you browse to the Export folder the first time, QuickBooks will remember where to go the next time you need to import an IIF file. Note the date and time are in the exported file name so you know which is which. After the export is done, you might want to delete the file so you don't accidentally import already imported data twice. Click Open to import the file and then click OK once the data has been imported successfully. And you can see here on this brand new copy of QuickBooks Pro MaxTrax created all these account numbers on the QuickBooks General Ledger automatically. If you have a clean copy of QuickBooks Pro, the import function in QuickBooks will create the accounts from that export function 
inside your QuickBooks chart of accounts automatically in the background. Nothing really needs to be done in preparation for the import, again, if you have a clean copy of QuickBooks. Once those accounts are created though, you would need to enter the account number again in the account number field as QuickBooks just puts the account number in the description. Whereas we might want to enter a description that makes more sense to us than just the number. And the account type needs to be selected in QuickBooks as well. However, if you already have transactions in an existing QuickBooks program you've been using to run your business, you would want to edit your chart of account account numbers in QuickBooks to match the imported transaction account numbers from MaxTrax before your first import. Let's say you already had an account to track undeposited funds in QuickBooks. Let's say account 1400 for example. The import would create a duplicate account, account number 11,000 from MaxTrax, which is how we track undeposited funds in MaxTrax. So this wouldn't be good. So before your first import, edit your account numbers in QuickBooks. And just the account numbers on your QuickBooks chart of accounts that would match the account numbers that will be imported from MaxTrax. Highlight the account number, right click, and select Edit Account from this drop list. And edit the account number in the upper right corner. Then click Save and Close. The account description does not need to match. The export is only looking at the account number. In MaxTrax, click on the Reports icon on the toolbar, select the General Ledger category on the left, and the default account posting General Ledger Accounts report on the right, and print this report. Then ensure that all of these accounts are entered on your QuickBooks chart of accounts by either editing your existing accounts so we don't end up with duplicate account numbers in QuickBooks, and then let MaxTrax create the accounts that you don't have already created in QuickBooks. Or go ahead and create those brand new accounts ahead of time in QuickBooks. Once again, if there's not a matching account in QuickBooks for a transaction that is imported, the import function will create one for you automatically. Again, you would need to edit the description and the account number in the account number field. And lastly, edit the account type in QuickBooks after that new account is created. If you want to keep your chart of account numbers in QuickBooks as they are, say, keep your undeposited funds in account 1400 in QuickBooks, you would need to create all brand new accounts on the chart of accounts in MaxTrax and then change those default account posting settings in MaxTrax again before you post any transactions in MaxTrax for the QuickBooks export to work correctly. So first, from the menu bar in MaxTrax, click on Accounting, select Chart of Accounts, and then use this Add GL Account button to start adding each account from QuickBooks to this list. You only need to create those accounts on this general ledger that will be assigned to the default account posting transactions list. That report that I showed you earlier in the video that lists all of the sections that the automatic transactions post to, such as sales, cost of goods sold, etc. Let's close here. After the accounts are created, click on Setups on the menu bar select Accounting and Payroll from the drop list, and Default Account Posting. These top five categories here on the left need all of their default accounts edited to match your chart of accounts in QuickBooks. So for example, we talked about the undeposited funds earlier, the 1400 account in QuickBooks. That account, called Funds, ready for deposit, also undeposited funds, are already set to post by default to the 11,000 account. 
Just highlight the transaction description and click the Assign GL Account Number button below and select that newly created account on your chart of accounts in MaxTrax called 1400 for undeposited funds in this example. Now all the transaction postings for all the payments received are tracked in the 1400 account here in MaxTrax called undeposited funds and will export to the 1400 account in your QuickBooks. One last setup step. From the menu bar, click on setups, company information, and here on the general page, select the account system used as QuickBooks from the drop list. This is just for reference. This doesn't affect the creation of an export transaction. Those transactions can be exported to an IIF file at any time, regardless of what is selected here. To recap, the QuickBooks export feature is just saving you time of either having to make a cash ticket to get your sales numbers in QuickBooks or save you the time in creating the journal entries to reflect your transactions in MaxTrax in your QuickBooks system. And remember, credit memos posted in MaxTrax do not come over in the QuickBooks export as QuickBooks cannot enter a negative vendor invoice. These need to be manually entered in QuickBooks. A few things to remember when using QuickBooks for your accounting. QuickBooks will not export an out-of-balance transaction out of MaxTrax. If you find that you have a transaction in MaxTrax in the Edit Unbalanced Transaction utility, after that unbalanced transaction is fixed, remember to include that in your next export. And note the date of the unbalanced transaction because once it's fixed and posted, that unbalanced transaction retains the original date that the transaction took place. QuickBooks tracks sales tax in the vendor record, and the sales tax imported from MaxTrax does not get treated like a vendor. So please note the Pay Sales Tax feature in QuickBooks under the Vendor section is not available for imported transactions. When you pay your sales tax out of QuickBooks, you would write your check to the sales tax agency and disperse the amount to the 23600 account if you leave it on the MaxTrax defaults. The QuickBooks export of ARs and APs does not include the detail, so the customers with charges on account and the vendors with charges on account are not tracked in detail in QuickBooks. Just the dollar amounts are posted to the 12,000 account for ARs and the 20,000 account for APs, again, if you're using the MaxTrax defaults for these accounts. We've found most shops do track their accounts receivable, post AR payments, and mail AR statements out of MaxTrax, and typically just reconcile their AP statements by hand to the actual invoices for their parts purchases, and then write a check to the vendor in QuickBooks dispersed to the 20,000 account Another option is to use the AP feature in MaxTrax and reconcile your AP statements in MaxTrax. Note that that requires you to subscribe to the corporate version of MaxTrax to get access to the AP accounting feature. And this concludes the lesson on QuickBooks Export Setup and Review.